He's supernatural. I'm telling you, he's a wonder. Uh, let me read this real quick. Isaiah 55 and verse 8 and 9. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Right. <laughs> neither are my ways, uh, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Glory. <laughs> and I thought about all these stories in the Bible <coughs> where it just didn't make sense the way God worked. All right. I remember a story about uh, there was a city and it was called Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> and it had such huge walls, they said they would even race chariots on those walls. Yeah. Now, if it was talking about in the natural, I was thinking what I would do, <laughs> I would get a cannon or I would get something, some dynamite to blow that joker up. But God's ways are higher than our ways. Yeah. And you know what? His form of tearing those walls down was. And he said, you be quiet. You march around. But be quiet. Mm -hmm. Six days. Don't say a word. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> but on the seventh day, you go around seven times. But on the seventh time, you shout. And right the second they shouted, the walls fell down flat. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you, Jesus is a wonder. Yeah. <laughs> He's a wonder. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I remember the story about Jehoshaphat when the three armies were coming against the, the people of Judah. Yes. <laughs> and of all things, God told them to anoint the praisers to go out to battle. Of all things, who would have ever thought of such a thing? I would want my big old my, my, uh, machine guns and I want my missiles and all that kind of stuff like that in the natural. But Jesus said, anoint the praisers. <laughs> to go out against three armies and they started singing oh hallelujah praise the Lord for your mercy and do it forever and they marched and they praised and they marched and all of a sudden the hallelujah those three armies turned against each other God said ambush and they were destroyed yes, yes. Jesus is a wonder <laughs> hallelujah and I remember Moses coming up to a dead end <laughs> to the Red Sea with the army behind him no yeah. I don't know what I panic. <laughs> but God said, stretch out your rod. Right. That makes no sense whatsoever. He stretched out his rod, and all well, glory, all of a sudden the wind started blowing and it parted those waters, and the water comes <laughs> Jesus is a wonder. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I remember the story about Naaman. Yes. <laughs> and, and the prophet told him, you go, he actually didn't tell him himself he sent a messenger. He said, you go tell Naaman to go dip in the, the river Jordan seven times. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And it made him mad. Mm -hmm. That made absolutely no sense to go go wash off in the old filthy river. It made no sense whatsoever. And it made him so angry. He said, how dare he not even come out and tell me personally. He was so aggravated. Yeah. He was in his flesh. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. he said, even of all the rivers for him to tell me to go in, there was all these other better, cleaner rivers. Why the Jordan? Right. <laughs> and such a wise little servant stopped him and he said, look, if the prophet had to told you to do some big, great, miraculous, vow, a vow or thing, you would have done it without hesitation. Right. He said, you ought to do it. And sure enough, <laughs> that man with leprosy dipped himself in that old nasty river seven times and he came up clean as he could be. Yes. Jesus is a wonder. Yes. He's a wonder. Hallelujah. Yes. Romans 12 and 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, yes. but be, hallelujah, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Can I tell you that we are in this world, but we're not of this world? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Let me read this real quick. Romans 8 and verse 6, it says, For to be carnally minded is death. <laughs> but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah. And verse 8 says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. Right. <laughs> Somebody say he's serious. He's serious, he's serious yeah. about it. We are in this world. Let me just read it to you, John. This is <laughs> Jesus praying to the Father about you and about me, about us. It says, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the 
the world. I pray not that they should uh, that they should be taken out of the world, but they, that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Yes. Your word is truth. Yes. Amen. Uh, I had a friend, she was here with me this morning, named Stephanie from Kentucky. And uh, she goes uh, to a, a Baptist church there in Kentucky, and the Lord is dealing with her so strong about the, being filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and if y'all were here this morning, yeah. I don't know if you don't remember what Pastor preached about. Right, right. <laughs> Jesus is a wonder. We had a conversation, we stayed up to 1 o'clock last night, talking <clears throat> all about the Holy Ghost. And, we, and I shared these scriptures, and I declare if he didn't say the same exact one. Everything we said just about came out of his mouth. Jesus is a wonder. I'm telling you. And I was thinking about, I'm just, I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you. You know when, when God made Adam and Eve, it said that he formed them out of the dust. Yeah. But he wasn't finished. He breathed his breath. He breathed his breath in them. And you are more than just flesh and bones. You are, there's something on the inside of you, and it's the spirit of the living God. And he wants us to operate not on this natural level, but on this spiritual level, this spiritual realm. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. Amen. We're living in a day, it's such an exciting time. I know that there's all kinds of things going on. Wrong in this world. It's exciting times. And I'm telling you, if the Spirit has ever been speaking to people, He's speaking now. And I said, if He's ever been speaking to folks, He's speaking now. And if people, if they would only have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, we're going to see these wonders. We're going to experience these wonders. We can't. Uh, <laughs> Whenever we have natural circumstances coming up, and they come up all the time, raise your hand if you're going through any situation. It's okay. Many yeah. raise my hand. If you're going through any situation, you cannot handle that situation in the natural realm. That's right. If you want to see something change, you can't handle it in no, the natural place. Yeah. Amen. You can't. <laughs> but if you want to see something change, you do it the Spirit's way. Whatever the Spirit instructs you to do, it will not make any sense whatsoever, I guarantee you, in the natural. It will not make any sense whatsoever. What sense does it make that we've got our sister that's so sick and I see you? What sense does it make to take a little cloth and put oil on it, but everybody touch and agree in faith? That makes no sense, but now you watch what happens. I'm telling you, God is going to use that and He's going to touch her. I believe it tonight. Hallelujah. It makes no sense. <laughs> but it does in the spirit. God is a supernatural God that operates in the supernatural level that manifests in this natural world. Woo. Good yeah. work. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, Amen. Jesus is a wonder. Yes, he is. Yes. And he is going to do powerful things if we will only take heed. I told them last night, if we, if there was any way that, that Jesus would open our, our, our spiritual eyes so that we could see what was happening, any time that we pray, mm -hmm. could you imagine seeing, if you're praying for your little children, and, and you're praying for them to go after God with a passion, and you can see with your own eyes angels being dispatched from the very throne room of heaven, going right to your lost land. If you could see what was going on in the spirit realm, we would never get off our knees. We'd be praying like never before. If we could see what's really going on, you see that the spirit realm is so much more real than this natural stuff that we're doing. The Bible says that we walk by faith, not by sight. I'm telling you, God wants us to operate in the spirit. He wants us to walk in the spirit every second of every day. And I'm telling you, uh, today I had to repeat. I went, I went up on, on prayer mountain for a little while this afternoon and I was praying. And I had to repent. Because sometimes it's easy to get in your flesh. Yeah. It's easy to look at your circumstances and it be knowing that you prayed and you prayed and you look at it and you see you get so discouraged because you don't see anything changing. But I'm telling you, we're not basing our actions on what we're seeing with our natural man. We're basing what we're doing on what the Word of God says and what the Spirit of the Living God is telling us to do. Yeah. 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 We don't go with our natural mind. We don't go, we don't walk in our natural
natural man. We don't talk in our natural man. We're not supposed to. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I had to repent of all the times that I've been discouraged, all of the times that I let my flesh rule. The Bible says if we walk in the, in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. I'm telling you, if I've ever, uh, if there's ever been a time in this world, just like Pastor said this morning, if there's ever been a time that you need to be filled up to the overflow status with the Holy Ghost and fire, it's these days that we're living in. Yeah. I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Yes, Holy Ghost. I'm so hungry to see those things in the Spirit take place. I'm so hungry to really see. I'm telling you, is God's Word true or is it not? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. His Word is true. Yeah. He really did yeah. bear those stripes for our healing. Yeah. No matter what, no matter how bad, no matter if it's cancer, no matter what stage of cancer, it doesn't matter. His Word is true. His Word is true. Yeah. And He's looking people that are walking in the spirit and listening to what the spirit is saying Amen. and praying in the spirit. Do you know when you pray in the spirit, you're praying the will of the Father? Amen. Yes. The Bible says even when you don't know what to pray, the spirit will take over and start praying through you. Yes. And it said that the spirit is even ever making intercession for you. And it said that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father ever making intercession for you. If two thirds of the Godhead is making intercession, what does that tell you we should be doing? Right. <laughs> I'm telling you, the fervent well glory. Let me read this real quick. I'm going to be on Satan. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you for reminding me. Yes. Hold on just a second. The effect, James 5 and 16, y'all know this verse. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. I looked up availeth in the Greek. <laughs> and it means to exercise force. Oh. <laughs> to exercise force. Let me read it like this. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man exercises much force. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, that yes. the devil is a defeated foe. Yes, he is. He's a defeated foe, and I get so tired of seeing the devil beating up on my brothers and sisters, and I get so tired of seeing that. Because greater is he that's yes. in us than he is in, that's in the world. Yes. And the Bible has given us such great and precious promises to stand on yes. to get that old yes. devil yes. out of here. Yes. yes, amen. It's time that we start walking in the spirit yes. and that we start uh, getting out of our natural flesh. Yes. Amen. Well, uh, Pastor uh, called me this afternoon or sent me a text this afternoon. It's just as good as a call. And he said, I, I, I'd like for you and, and, a, and a couple of ministers to, to talk uh, this evening. And so I gave it a lot of thought. I, I even brought some some notes. Uh, but as I was sitting here listening to April, I was, I was listening to, uh, in, in my mind, going back and listening, and, and listening to what Pastor said this morning, I, I was reminded of a, of a, a scripture that I, I, I took a screenshot of. This is Acts chapter 10. And he's talking about Jesus' ministry. And he says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Jesus Christ never once functioned in his deity. Do you understand that? Jesus Christ left his deity. Came as a perfected human being, not knowing sin, because sin, according to the scripture, is passed through the seed of the Father. He took on the flesh provided by the womb of a woman, never knowing sin, and was therefore a perfect human, yet he was intrinsically God because of his DNA. But he never functioned in his deity because he left it. Then what gave him his authority and his power? The Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. All right. The same Holy Spirit that he passed on on the day of Pentecost. Jesus Christ never ever did anything that you and I do not possess the authority and the power to accomplish. All right. Not one time. 
Not one time did Jesus Christ perform a healing and a healing happened simply because he was the son of God. That sounds like heresy, but bear with me. In Acts chapter 10, it says that he was endued with power by God through the Holy Spirit. All right. And that's why he was able to look at his disciples and he said, you marvel at what I have done, but greater things shall you do. Through the comforter that will come or that I will send you. How can he possibly say that? He's God because he was not functioning in his deity. He was was relying on the power that descended upon him when he was baptized by John in the river Jordan. And it said that a dove descended upon him. And he heard a voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son whom I am well pleased. If you don't know in scripture, in Hebrew teaching, the dove was the physical symbol of the presence of God. Right. They got that from where Noah released the dove out and it found a place to set its foot. It was a picture of deliverance. It was a picture of God's faithfulness. And that was the physical representation of the presence of almighty God. Now, if Jesus is functioning in deity and he is God, why does he need to receive anything from God? Right? So therefore, I'm understanding through Acts chapter 10, through the baptism that took place under John's ministry, Jesus Christ fully understood. If I am to accomplish anything through this body that I am now in, it is not going to be through the deity that I left in heaven. It's going to be by the authority passed on to me through my Father called the third person that is the Holy Ghost. All right. Praise God. If it was good enough for Jesus Christ, right. it's good enough for me. All right. And if Jesus Christ understood that in order to function in it properly, I need to find some quiet time to get up on the mountain. And pray by myself until I can get full of whatever and then walk off in power. See, the problem is most of us have never had a transfiguration meeting. Mm. All right. When the world began to understand that Jesus Christ was more than just a man, took place after the mountain of transfiguration. Does everybody know where I'm at right now? Yeah. He walked up on a mountain to pray and he took three disciples with him, Peter, James, and John. And when he walked up, something in the spirit realm was pierced, was opened. And Jesus Christ, through his prayer, pierced the veil between earth and heaven. And he stood in the presence of God, functioning in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Peter, James, and John saw who Jesus was. Then they saw Moses and Elijah come and minister to Jesus. But what made that important? What made it important was that Jesus went to the mountain on purpose and stayed until the transfiguration took place. And it said, and then he walked in Jesus purposely walked out into a desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Right. To receive power. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. That's good. Amen. Good word. Amen. We don't. I, lo- I love what Pastor said this morning. We focus so much on getting people to speak. A heavenly language. Why? Because it's a checklist we can mark off. Praise the Lord. We've got another one filled with the Holy Ghost. What would happen if we started to understand that the more that we got into the presence of God, it wouldn't have to be, well, we got them to speak in tongues. It would be, well, we got them on the mountain. Let's let them come down when they're ready. 
Because we need to stop worrying about what they look like, what they sound like, whether they broke through. It doesn't matter if they pray in another tongue. What we need to get them is in the power of the Holy Ghost so they can go about doing good works for the kingdom of God. Yeah. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. Not one time did he tell his disciples, I'm going to show you how to pray until God prays through you. Not one time. They said, teach us to pray. He said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and deliver us from temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power of the Lord forever. Amen. Not one time that he's speaking any angelic language. Not one time. So what does that tell me? Prayer is not about getting to the point where you can talk a certain way, act a certain way. Be a certain way. Prayer is trying to get your mind lined up with who Jesus Christ is, who God the Father is, what his heartbeat is, what he bleeds for. We should find something in the midst of that. Something should empower us, and it's called the Holy Spirit. The Spirit has spoken to me weeks ago. We have a sin coming up. This where we go up on prayer mountain. We got a, a retreat. All of that. I'm gonna spoil the alert. <laughs> Last year, I did not have a theme. We just called it a sin. 2019. When we got there, what we found out between April's message, my message, what we talked about in our small and large group time, and what the music began to show us was what he called us to ascend into his presence from glory to glory. That became our anthem. Glory to glory. Long before we ever got ready to start planning this or anything, God began to speak to me. This is what I want to hear. This is what I want them to hear. Release the roar. This is what the Spirit of God wants to have on us in that Release the the roar. I got a text from April the other night because we're, we we just hold those people. And we know we can text each other and we'll get somebody to text back. Well, oh, glory, we don't, we don't have church between two of us. I want you to read, I, I want you to hear this scripture. And how many of you know that you get confirmation out of the mouths of two or three witnesses? Right? I want you, want, want you to hear this. The Lord also will roar from Zion yes. and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy and no alien shall ever pass through her again. You know what I came to the realization of? Release the roar. God's not talking about my roar. What God needs to do is get me to a place where I am simply a vessel. I am a horn that yeah. he blows through. Yeah. He is desiring to release his mighty roar yeah. into this place. He is, he is ready. He is ready to let every nation, tribe, and tongue know I am God, Jehovah. I am the lion of the tribe of Judah. I am the one who was and is and is to come. I am he that was dead and is now alive. He is looking for a group of people who are willing to surrender their self to release the roar of Jehovah God from a holy mountain called Zion. He is wanting a group of people to get so full of the Holy Ghost and power that as we begin to release the word that he puts in our life, it comes out as a mighty roar from the lion of the tribe oh, yeah. of Judah. I am ready for revival, but what God needs before we can get there is he needs a surrendered people functioning in the power of the unction of the Holy Ghost who aren't afraid to step past the line that is acceptable and say you can quiet me if you want to try you can put in earplugs if you want to but the roar that's coming is so great it's going to shake every nation every tribe, every tongue chains will fall off, locks will break doors spring open and there's not a thing you can do about it release the roar I'm ready. Praise God. Yes. Pastor, I hope you got something. I'm done. <laughs> about this afternoon was for them to do some tag team preaching. And that's that's what they've done. I love having these uh, men and women, and there's others in our midst who uh, have the anointing and the call of God. And we're gonna we're gonna hear from every generation this year. And uh, and we're hearing the word of the Lord. 
Um, I, I believe that God is wanting us to walk in the Spirit, even as Christ was filled with the Spirit. Even as John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. Yes. Even as the New Testament church. But God has called a He has called a 21st century church to walk in the Holy Ghost. Not just a first century church. That's good. See, God has called us as the 21st century church. To walk in the Spirit. Right. And I want to I want to finish this day just by reiterating what the Holy Spirit, I told Lisa at lunch, I said, what would happen if 150 people were to really walk in the Spirit? Yes, right. Right. Yes. That's how I left here this morning feeling. That I, what if 150 people just said, Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. Amen. Use me, lead me, Guide me, direct me. You're talking about revival. Amen. See, one of the reasons we're not seeing revival is our vision of revival is limited. That's good. See, we we vision revival sometimes based on something really based on yesterday's bread. Amen. And based on something that happened. Once upon a time. And memories are great. But I'm here to tell you. I too believe. That the kind of revival. The kind of roar. That God has for planet earth. In these last days. The, the church has got to be victorious. We have got to walk in the spirit. Yes. Be led by the spirit. Be filled with the spirit. My challenge to everybody here tonight. Is to go into this week. Saying Holy Spirit lead me. Speak to me. Let me hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When I have a question, give me answers. <clears throat> give me the hunger for the Word of God. Help me to walk in the Spirit. Not just in a traditional or a historically uh, patterned life, but take me to a new place, to a new level, to a new realm, to a new understanding. Take me to a new revelation. And if we'll all do that, listen, the song the girl sang tonight was right on target. Yeah. He, there's never been a battle he's lost. Yes, amen. He's never failed to do his will. Yes. Let's all step up into his will this week and just see what the Holy Spirit does. I have questioned in weeks, in the last few weeks in my prayer time, I have questioned uh, you know, God, what's happened to the church when I was a when I was a child? This is not like me because I I'm not one to just live in the past. When it comes to the church, I want God to do His work, whatever it looks like. But I, I I've gone to the Lord and I I've been burdened. I've been I've been sometimes sad because I wonder what's happened when 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 I was a child we'd go to church. From the word go, we would have church and people would weep yeah. and people would pray and sometimes people would fill the altars and weep and pray and they, they would love one another. What the perfect church. There was there was problems. There was problems in society then. There was but I'd ask, you know, I'd ask the Lord sincerely, what what's wrong with the church, folks? It's got to do with walking in the spirit. It's yeah. not about duplicating what they did in 1955. See, it's not about duplication. If I can just look like, if I can just act like, if I can just sing the same songs or preach those same certain, no, it, it's about walking in the spirit. See, when I was young, people would come to church and they would be people praying 30 minutes or an hour before church. And they were praying for the Holy Spirit to have his way. And so what I'm saying is let's go this week. Let's go in the Spirit. Let's pray in the Spirit. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to lead in God. This is what will happen. There is, a, there is, there is. I was just reading it and I was, I was, I was trying to find the transfiguration. If you, look, if you know what I was looking for, I was just all over the place trying to get my fingers on it. And, 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 and I was reading in there. And what did you call your thing last year on the mountain? 
a sin. And I got over there where, where, where it talks about ascending. If we will allow the Holy Spirit to take us up, well, we're going to see great healings. We're going to see creative miracles. But I want to tell you, there is a level where those things are not going to happen. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to take us where he wants us to go. Out of our comfort zone. To take us out of our routines and out of our habits. We live in a society, especially in the church where we live in a church world where everybody knows what church looks like. They know what revival looks like and they got it in their mind. And what you're doing is you're saying, God, I want you to move and I want you to move on me right where I'm at. Right. What we need to say to God is, Lord, here I am. Take me up. Yes, amen. Wow. <laughs> Beam me up. <laughs> as you were talking about the other day. Yes. Holy Spirit, beam me up. Yes, amen. Take me to a new place. Give me in the word and show me new revelation and understanding. Give me a new song. Give me a, a new joy. Let a shift yes. take place yes. in me. Yes. We are so afraid of change. It is one of the absolute downfalls of, of humanity and one of the Hardest, um, I don't want to call it a habit, but it is a stumbling block. We just don't like change. And I've studied a lot in recent years, the, even the neurology and the brain. I've, I've looked into it a lot, and our brain is constantly looking for shortcuts because we, we by nature, we like to do things, and we take the path of least resistance it is our it is our nature and we learn how to have church without some things well we learn how to be content without some things we learn how to settle what we need to leave here tonight understanding is that god wants to bring change into your life Amen. get your eyes off of other people this is not about what God's doing in your husband or your wife or your children or your family. Everybody say, it's about me. It's about what God's doing in me. Yes, amen. And God wants to bring change. And change does not come easy to us. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is the agent of change. Yes, yes, amen. And if we will walk in Him and what I was trying to say and what I hope the Holy Spirit was able to convey, he doesn't have to try. He always succeeds. Yes. But I want to tell you that we need to encourage people to walk in the Spirit and not just have this experience.